Support for NPR and the following message come from Sattva. Sattva luxury mattresses are every bit as elegant as the most expensive brands, but because they're sold online, they're about half the price. Visit com slash NPR and save an additional $200. Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbong. Today's book is a great look at what happens when a country refuses to look back at the totality of its own history, pockmarks and all. The book is Jews in the Garden, a Holocaust Survivor, the Fate of His Family, and the Secret History of Poland in World War II. And it's written by Judy Rakowski, a a real old-school gumshoe-type investigative reporter. She took multiple trips to Poland to help a family member, a Holocaust survivor, find out what happened to his cousin. And in this interview with Lynn Arditi from The Public's Radio, she talks about how hush-hush certain polls were when it came to discussing their role in the Holocaust. And it's a real lesson in how powerful of a force collective silence can be. Support for this podcast and the following message come from WISE, the account that lets you manage your money internationally. With WISE, you can send, spend, and receive in over 40 different currencies. You always get the mid-market exchange rate with no markups or hidden fees. Simple. Download the WISE app today. This message comes from NPR sponsor Mint Mobile. From the gas pump to the grocery store, inflation is everywhere. So Mint Mobile is offering premium wireless starting at just $15 a month. To get your new phone plan for just $15, go to mintmobile.com slash switch. Journalist Judy Rakowski was in her 20s when she became intrigued by her elderly relative Sam, a Holocaust survivor. On a trip Judy took with Sam to the Polish village where he grew up, they learned that his young cousin Henya may have escaped. And so over the next three decades, Judy returned to Poland with Sam again and again, deploying her skills as an investigative reporter in the quest to find Henya. But they confronted what Rakowski describes as a conspiracy of silence. Their journey is the story Rakowski tells in Jews in the Garden. The book is part memoir and part historical thriller about excavating a painful past. So, Judy, as an experienced journalist, you came to this project with a lot of skills in digging up court records and filing public records requests and finding people. How was the search for Henya different? Well, records aren't really so accessible in Poland, even after things were much more open after the fall of communism. But... What I did activate was sort of a network of advocates and people that are, you know, working with academics. And eventually I got this gigantic court file about what happened to this other family of cousins, the doulas. And that is extremely, it might be the best documented case of this kind. And it showed that 20 odd gunmen of various battalions in the underground staged this attack on this farm and executed these five people who were hiding under a barn for 18 months. You and your cousin Sam ran up against a lot of reluctance from people he'd grown up with in Poland to talk about what had happened in their own village at the hands of Polish so-called partisans during the Holocaust. Can you describe how that played out during your reporting? Yes. So what was really confusing and challenging was that we were welcomed into homes of people Sam knew we were, you know, people served us these incredible multi-course meals and they were so friendly. But then when the conversation turned to elaborating on this tip about Henya, people stared at their plates. People that Sam knew, you know, that were really, he was really close to when he was young. It was almost like there was something that they could not go near. A lot has been written about the Polish resistance during the Holocaust. When you first started researching this book, did you find much that was documented about this dark side of the role of Polish partisans during the German occupation? No. And I also understood the the very strong feelings that Poles have about their very proud tradition of helping the allies, of you know, the Poles were the home army. They were heroes in in many ways. And I want to be clear that I'm not 
painting this with a broad brush, but there were some groups and there it was an umbrella of many, almost everyone was a partisan. Like, you know, it's like you can't find anyone who says they weren't, you know, somehow helping the underground. Also, Poles save more Jews than any other nation or any other group. There are more Poles honored at Yad Vashem than anywhere else. Yad Vashem is the Holocaust memorial in Israel where, you know, people are, they actually have to have very vetted, curated examples of what they did to save Jews. But there was also this dark history. So now that the book is out, what's the chance of somebody who lives in Poland now actually reading your book? Well, they can read it in English, published in the U.S., and it's going to be translated to Russian, Spanish, and Italian. But no Polish publisher has asked for the foreign rights yet. Thanks to Lynn Ardetti from The Public's Radio for that interview. Again, Rakowski's book is called Jews in the Garden, A Holocaust Survivor, The Fate of His Family, and The Secret History of Poland in World War II. Thanks for listening. This message comes from NPR sponsor, Allianz Travel Insurance. Anything can happen when you're traveling far from home. Protect your next international adventure with Allianz Travel Insurance. Learn more and get a quote at AllianzTravelInsurance.com.